Hey folks, Moose here. So let's just take this a little bit further and let's talk about this machine that's doing the focusing. Now, you spent a lot of money, okay, to buy a really sophisticated autofocus computer. So not taking advantage of it makes no sense. So how can we take advantage of it? Okay, first and foremost, if you were to look at 100% of my focusing, okay, operation, 90% of that is done by the camera. The other 10% is done manually by myself. Okay, so the camera, the lens is set to MA, and I'm manually focusing. I'm an old fart, I'm used to it, I do it quite a bit, okay? Now that 90% of the time, okay, I am using, Hi folks, Moose here. So let's continue on talking about autofocus. <laughs> hey folks, Moose here. So let's continue on this discussion on getting a sharp image. Now we're gonna talk about using the computer we paid so much money for. It really makes no sense not to use it or take advantage of it, and more importantly, customize it to your photography. So, of 100% of the focusing that I do, about 80% of it is done by the camera, other 20% is done manually, as in the camera is set, the lens is set to the MA mode and I manually focus the lens. I kind of enjoy it. Many times it, it makes the difference. And this is because I'm the kind of photographer who puts the camera to his eye, composes a viewfinder, and then focuses the image and goes click. A lot of people will sit there and use, move the camera around, put the sensor on the thing they want sharp, have the camera focus and then recompose and shoot. That's just too slow for me. So I don't, I, I'm, I compose, focus and shoot. Now, of the 80% of the time that the camera, okay, is doing the autofocusing, 100% of that, if you were to break it down, about 75% is in the D21 autofocus mode. The other percentage is in the auto area AF mode. Now what's the difference? It's important to understand that. So D by itself, little d, stands for dynamic. What that means is the computer here is doing all sorts of cool things like focus lock, focus tracking, color recognition, all these really important cool things the computer can do for us now. All right? The number, 9, 21, 51, okay, is how many AF sensors are in part of the process. So personally, I use D21. People go, why do you use D21? It's a common question. Because the guy who designed this thing, he says it's the best. It's that simple. That's what I'm going by, what the guy who made it said is the best. Now, D21. So the D, the dynamic, only works when this thing is moving, okay? Either I'm panning on a tripod or shooting something going by, all right? If this is on a tripod and I'm photographing a rock, the D, even though it's turned on, is doing nothing for you. The camera has to be moving. Now, I use D21. That means I have one AF sensor. The little red square is going to be lit up. It's going to be active. I can put that on my subject, and it's going to lock on that subject. Then there's going to be 20 around that. Now, what are they doing? So if you're panning, okay, and you're focusing really, in, I'm sorry, your panning isn't really good, it's going to assign autofocus operation to one of those 20 AF sensors around that one you have selected and put on the subject. It's going to pass off that operation. Now, I can tell you about it. It's going to do it. It does it seamlessly, flawlessly, and really, really well. So much I depend on it, okay? So that's the D21. Now the other one, the Auto Area AF, where you have just one AF sensor, okay? And then you move that around. In Auto Area AF, the whole viewfinder, the whole viewfinder is one sensor. Not only that, it also, when you go to Auto Area AF, you activate the closest subject priority. Okay, so what does all that mean? Well, you got one bird flying by, or a plane flying by, okay, and just one going by. You have a uh, single bird that's coming down the river, all right? Auto Area F, it's gonna lock onto that one subject that fast. It's just brilliant, okay? Bird in the sky, plane in the sky, it makes it a no-brainer operation, which is good. It's one less variable for you to think about in the photographic process. Now, at the same time, Auto Area AF, you get that closest subject priority, okay? So you have one bird 
no problem. If you have a flock of birds in your auto area F, it's going to focus on the closest one. A squadron of planes, it's going to focus on the closest one. Okay. Now, depending on your photography, that might be a good or a bad thing. It's your call. But those are the two that I'm using. Now, the auto area F is so good, why not use it all the time? Well, if you're, let's say you're taking a picture of a person. Right now, you're the camera on the subject. What's the closest thing to the camera? Right? The nose. Don't want that particularly sharp. We want these have to be sharp. Okay? That is that much of a difference. If you're shooting a 1.4 and you focus on the nose, eyes will be totally out. That's one example why auto area AF isn't so hot. How about D21 for something that's flying? You could do that very easily. But keep in mind, AF sensor is really small. And let's say you've got a bird going by and it's filling maybe half the frame. Have you ever tried keeping your AF sensor on the eyeball of a bird going by? If it's a little square, can be a challenge. Auto area AF, no challenge. Now, let's say, for example, you are sitting here clicking away, D21, all of a sudden something explodes from behind the rock and flies. There isn't time to go to auto area F. What do you do? Well, keep in mind this very simple, basic principle, film plane, okay? The film plane, you can think the LCD on the back of your camera, if you want an example. It's a film plane, it's a flat surface. And everything that's the same parallel distance from that film plane will be sharp. So in this case, a bird's going by, don't have time to get the AF sensor, or maybe not the skill, to keep the AF sensor on the eye, put it on the breast. Because the breast is on the same film plane as the eyeballs. Focus here, that is sharp. And this is a bigger target as well, so it's easier to keep the AF sensor on the subject. Very simple, very easy to do, okay? Now you have a lot of custom settings in the camera. I'm not going to go through all of them, you can find them on the website. But the one I want to talk about is the A2, okay, custom setting A Alpha 2. That is the autofocus C, continuous priority mode. Now I think of this personally as a buffer management tool. Let me explain. So you're sitting there shooting. You're shooting maybe with a DF for a D800 with a small buffer. Six frames, you're out of business until the buffer empties it into the card. Well, in that particular custom setting mode, the camera only fires, only takes a picture when two things happen. When one, the camera says the subject is in focus, and two, you're depressing the shutter release button. When those two operations are going, then the camera will take a picture. If the camera says the subject is not in focus or you're not depressing shutter release, no pictures. So by not taking a bunch of pictures that are probably out of focus, you're not filling up the buffer, which means you can shoot more. Pretty simple. One last little thing. You have two ways of activating the autofocus system. You can do the shutter release, or in the custom settings, change it to the if on or another button on the back of the camera. Now, a lot of my good friends are really talented. I mean, they can walk and chew gum. I can't walk and chew gum. And I've tried and tried and tried to use the autofocus activation on the back of the camera and use the shutter release just for taking pictures. It's just not in me. It's just not what I can do. So autofocus operation, I activate it and do it all with the shutter release. A lot of people use the AF on button. That works great, perfect. It's just not for my kind of, I just don't have the mental whereabouts to do it. I don't know. It frustrates me like to no end. So that's the basics, okay? We're going to maximize this computer, understanding that dynamic mode works only when the camera is moving, never when it's plugged on a, t on a tripod, and we're going to use the autofocus modes to not only get something tack sharp, but to make up for perhaps our lack of good technique. So that's the next thing to think about when it comes to getting a sharp image.